I'd like you to meet my friend, beta-hydroxybutyrylation. You're right, it did take me 17 times of saying that before it rolled off my tongue seamlessly, but let's forget about how I articulate things and let's talk about brand new spanking research that has come out surrounding how ketones affect different portions of proteins and our cells. This is like insanely cool stuff. Okay, so it turns out that ketones don't just have an effect on our cells for fuel. They don't just have an effect on what's called histone deacetylase inhibition. They have an effect on something called beta-hydroxybutyrylation. That literally means beta-hydroxybutyrate has its own specific effect on proteins, on histones, on various things within the body. Let's talk about what that means. Hey, after this video, if you're doing keto, you've got to check out Superfat. There is a link down below to get a special discount on any of their awesome nut butters. My personal favorite is their Nitro Cold Brew Nut Butter, which is like a coffee, just like the name implies, a cold brew nut butter. So it's, so it's macadamia nut butter, almond butter, along with some coffee. It's so unbelievably good. But they have a bunch of different flavors as well. They also have some brownie mixes, some pancake mixes. So if you're doing keto, you just want to have some fun, but you want to keep it within the rails of what I would consider pretty clean keto, then you've got to check them out. So special link with special discount down below for super fat. They are epic and a big supporter of this channel. So thank you, Super Fat, for the support and for extending awesome discounts out to my subscribers. So that link's down below after this video. So this study was published in the journal Science Advances, all right? And it found that, again, ketones do this very particular thing. Now, I'm going to back up for a second because I did a video probably a year and a half ago where I talked about the ketones having an effect on what's called histone deacetylase inhibition. That means that early on, we realized that ketones have an effect on allowing genes to express. Genes that would normally be under lock and key now had the ability to express, giving us more quote unquote genetic potential, allowing us to express more of our genes. Now we find that it goes further than that. Now we find that we have 3,392 at least receptor sites for beta-hydroxybutyrate, for BHB, the ketone, within our cells, within our proteins. Okay, this is on over 1,400 different proteins within our body. So we now know that, okay, we literally have receptor sites for ketones. Clearly they have a positive function or some form of function within our body. But what does it do when it beta-hydroxybutylates a cell? This complicated word, what's actually happening? Well, a lot of it is still being investigated, but we do know that when ketones bind to receptors on histones, it has an effect on what is called gene splicing, which I'm going to talk about in just a second because it's a little complicated, but I'll kind of tone it down because this is so unbelievably fascinating. So the researchers have looked a little bit further and they found that this effect of ketones on what are called histones is predominantly related to DNA repair and RNA transport, meaning pretty much expressing genes and keeping us within the confines of like good, healthy cellular function and repair. But we have to look at this thing called splicing, and I talked about this in another video. Splicing of genes is what makes humans unique, okay? Our genes have the ability to splice and split off before they encode, so before they're actually expressed. And to give you kind of some context, a grain of rice has two times as many genes as we have as a human in terms of variety. They are more quote unquote complex as far as genes go if you look at this, the sheer number of genes. But we as humans have the ability to splice over 80% of our genes, okay? When we splice our genes, it means you take one gene and you can splice it into a bunch of different variants, okay? Then you're encoding for multiple variants. So it's like you have one mother gene that could encode, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 genes. So the number improves exponentially of how many genes you're actually able to encode. That's what makes us so complicated. It also is what makes us unstable because as we age, there is some dysregulation of this whole process. Okay, dysregulation of what's called the spliceosome, appropriately named, where all this splicing would take place. So that means that we have inefficient, possibly dysfunctional splicing that's occurring. So a very fragile process of taking a gene, splicing it into a different variant, is now potentially corrupted with an additional amino acid or extra proteins that shouldn't be there that are causing it to like create something weird, right? Maybe it's a growth, maybe it's just you know cell apoptosis where the cell just, just doesn't function well and immediately dies. Wasteful processes. 
Well, this is where the ketones come in. There was a study done on humans that was published in the journal Tissue Cell that looked at this a little bit more. They found that beta-hydroxybutyrate prevented the diabetes-associated dysfunction of endothelial cell walls. Okay, what does that mean? It means sometimes there are cell walls become messed up as a result of diabetes. Well, what happened there? Well, they realized that ketones through this whole process, through this beta-hydroxybutyrylation, had the ability to express more of what is called, in this case, vascular endothelial growth factor. Now, what, am, like, what does this really mean in human terms? I'm gonna just paraphrase it, but basically it means that the ketones were able to kind of recognize that there was an issue going on because this person was diabetic. Therefore, the ketone bound to the receptor site in the right area to express the right gene to potentially repair. <laughs> what? It's like ketones have a mind of their own and can bind to the proper receptors. Of course, it's happening in our own brain, sending a signal saying there's a problem here, and, and these ketones have the ability to bind to the appropriate histone to trigger the proper expression and slicing of this. This just means that we are opening up a whole new world of research in this. So in the case of this vascular endothelial growth factor, that is something that is generally expressed in like endurance athletes that have very good just vascular function and good endothelial layers. Like they're able to have that support wall within their vascular system because they do a lot of cardio, right? So essentially that's something that's expressed there and we're seeing that expressed in people that need it expressed. So the ability to have ketones kind of modulate different things within our body. Does this mean you need to be in ketosis all the time? Absolutely not. It means that periodic higher amounts of ketones, like by doing longer 24, 48 hour fasts that are really bringing insulin levels low and allowing the proper gene expression, could be exceptionally, exceptionally fascinating for overall DNA recovery, repair, and all this that are gonna make us potentially age better. So as always, keep it locked in here for new and emerging research on this channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.